Today on Behind the Mystery, we're talking about narcolepsy, a condition that affects around one in 2,000 people in the U.S. It's often an underdiagnosed or misdiagnosed disorder. And for one woman, it was quite the journey. Narcolepsy can be described as struggling to stay awake or nodding off at inappropriate times. It can affect a person's ability to work, attend school, and build personal relationships. Christine has been living with her condition for over 25 years. My symptoms started around age 12 when I was in um, junior high. I was falling asleep all day in class. The other kids were mean. They thought it was a joke. They'd always just slam books next to my ears and watch me just like jump out of my sleep. School called for um, a parent conference. I was failing in school and to be able to graduate, I had to take night classes. It affected my social life. We'd have sleepover parties and like I would fall asleep right away. I was doing my homework on the floor and I fell asleep in my book. My dad was like, Christine, Christine, wake up. He was trying to wake me up and he thought something was wrong with me because he couldn't wake me up and he got scared. I started to like wake up out of this deep sleep and when he's like, okay, something's just like not right. Dr. Raj is a pulmonary critical care sleep specialist and has dedicated his career to helping patients with narcolepsy. When I want to explain narcolepsy, I define it as a chronic neurological condition where there's a disconnect about day and night. When we talk about the onset of symptoms, it happens younger in life. It doesn't care about gender. So males and females are both equal. One in 2,000 people in the United States may have narcolepsy. And I gotta say that number is underdiagnosed because of the lack and delay and because it mimics many other diseases. It takes almost 10 years sometimes to make the correct diagnosis. A patient has to see even up to six doctors before they get the correct diagnosis. There are five symptoms of narcolepsy. You don't need to have all five symptoms to be diagnosed. When I think about the symptoms of narcolepsy, I kind of put them into the big five. Number one, it's always gonna be excessive daytime sleepiness. This is the most debilitating. People during the day are falling asleep from irresistible attacks of sleepiness. Cataplexy, it's when you lose muscle tone. It could be weakness of the legs, buckling of the knees. It could be only in the face. It could be drooping of your eyes, slurring of your speech, poor sleep at night. They have multiple awakenings and arousals, making the daytime twice as hard. Sleep paralysis, there's a disconnect between the brain and the body. You're awake, but your body is still stuck in REM sleep and you can't move. Hypnagogic and hypnopopnic hallucinations. Your body puts your mind in this hyper aroused state. And sometimes you see something out of the corner of your eye. You may see a shadow out there. It could be scary. You're not going to have all five symptoms at the same time. They could appear at different times in life. Along with excessive daytime sleepiness, Christine also experienced cataplexy. I lose muscle tension in my neck. Sometimes my knees will buckle. If I laugh, my face would droop. Around my family, they're really hilarious. They just make jokes all the time and I'd be like afraid to hang out with them or be around the family because um, I lose um, my muscle tension in my neck. So I'd be embarrassed. <laughs> and how scared can you possibly be where you're just laughing and all of a sudden you can't stand, your arm's not working, your vision's getting blurry, you can't even get the words out? Christine was telling me very emotional stories where no one knew what this cataplexy was. Uh, my nephews and my sister's side of the family, they really didn't understand because they lived far away. Um, they just thought that I wanted to be my, by myself. They didn't miss spending time on my family. Around 50% of patients who have narcolepsy have probably been undiagnosed. The symptoms of narcolepsy mimic so many other diseases. Things like depression, things like anxiety, ADD, ADHD. So they see many doctors. There is a resource out there called morethantired.com. It's a great place where if you think you suffer from narcolepsy or know someone who has it, they have a screening questionnaire. So it tells you, hey, maybe I should go see a physician. And on that note, there is a physician finder to find out who is close to you who actually is familiar with this disorder. I went to my family physician and got evaluated. 
they did the blood work and it came out clear and they didn't understand so then they referred me out to a neurologist and then schedule the sleep study because she was unclear of what was going on. How do we diagnose people with narcolepsy? The test we do is number one, we get an overnight sleep study. We call that a polysomography. We have EEGs attached to your brain. We're looking at your heart rate. We have your movements. Then you'll pursue what's called a MSLT. That stands for multiple sleep latency test. It's kind of a napping study. So based upon criteria on how fast you fall asleep and how many times you go into REM sleep with the right history and physical, we can make a diagnosis. So 25 years ago, um, being diagnosed um, meant a week long study. My parents were very supportive. They went with me to the hospital and I stayed there by myself and was kind of scared. It's a big white room with a clear glass mirror and they hook you up to electrodes. My emotions were just confused, didn't know what was going on, just waiting for results. We went back to the neurologist and um, they sat down and finally diagnosed me with narcolepsy. Relief can come with finally being diagnosed, which is why it's important to be aware of your symptoms and speak to a sleep specialist if you suspect you have narcolepsy. When I talk to my patient with narcolepsy, whether it's before the diagnosis or after, I want to give them the confidence that there is a diagnosis. People out there do suffer. So after being diagnosed, I felt more positive, hung out with the family a lot more often, um, and not feel ashamed. A year ago, I got referred to Dr. Raj. You can open up to Dr. Raj like a book. So since there's no cure for narcolepsy, Dr. Raj has been really patient. When I think of Christine, it reminds me that every treatment is individualized. Every patient with narcolepsy is unique. There are certain things that patients need, and one treatment plan doesn't fit everyone. Doing the research helped me find some people that had narcolepsy that understood my symptoms. Um, understood what I was going through because they were going through the same thing. Be your own advocate. Don't give up. If you think you have any of these symptoms discussed, visit morethantired.com to take the symptom screener and find a sleep specialist near you. You can also visit our website at thebalancingact.com. We'll be right back.